Let's suppose that we decide to implement the withdraw method and we also decide to write unit tests for it. Now the behavior of the withdraw method is going to depend on whether or not you have enough money in the bank account to actually withdraw the amount specified. So we need to have several different cases being tested. And the question is, well, what is the most efficient way of testing something with several different sets of data, several different test cases, and that is what data-driven testing is for. So any unit supports data-driven testing in a variety of ways, and we're going to look at one of those ways by looking at how you can actually define different test cases for a given test. So let's go ahead and make a test fixture. So I'm going to make a fixture called data-driven tests. Like so, now inside this fixture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the bank account. So I'll have private bank account uh, BA, bank account BA, like so. I will have a method called setup, which is going to be decorated with the setup attribute. So this is going to be invoked before every single test that actually gets executed. And here we'll simply initialize the bank account to a brand new bank account with a balance of 100. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to test the withdrawing and we want to test multiple scenarios at the same time. We want to test scenarios where the operation succeeds and we want to test scenarios where the operation fails. Now let's suppose that instead of throwing an exception, we're actually going to return some sort of flag indicating whether the withdrawing operation was actually successful. So I'm going to change the void to bool here and that bool is going to be true if there is enough money to withdraw and false if there isn't. So for now, since we are not putting any implementation in here just yet I'm just going to return false and then we'll come back here and we'll write the actual test for the kind of operations that can happen so I'm going to have a public void test and it's going to be something like test multiple withdrawal scenarios so we're going to test multiple withdrawal scenarios now you'll notice that unlike all the other tests that we've written so far this particular test is going to take arguments so we're going to specify a couple of arguments to this test we're going to specify the amount to withdraw we're also going to specify whether we expect this test to succeed should succeed and we're also going to specify what the expected final balance is so we're going to have expected balance. So you'll notice that this information, these three uh, arguments to this method, they have to be provided by something from somewhere. Whoever is calling this test method actually has to provide those arguments. Now what we want to do is we want to perform the actual test. So we say var result equals bank account dot withdrawal. So we try to withdraw the amount of money that we need to withdraw. So that's amount to withdraw. And we'll look at what the consequences are. So first of all, if, for example, the uh, in operation doesn't succeed, we might want to issue a warning. So we might to say something like warn if not result. So result, remember, is the status flag. It basically tells you whether the operation succeeds. And if it didn't, then we can say something like failed for some reason. Or you could do something stronger. You could, for example, make an assertion. Now, if we want to do assertions, we going to do assert multiple because we're testing two things here. So it's not just a single value, the final expected balance that we're testing, but we're also testing whether the operation succeeded or not. So you can issue a warning like this, or you can do something stronger. You can, for example, assert that uh, the flag is actually uh, true or is false depending on the argument. So if we have two asserts in a test, remember we have to use assert multiple. Assert multiple. So we're going to have a lambda here, and this is where we're going to perform the assertion. So first of all, we're going to assert that the result is actually equal to, is equal to the expected result, which is should succeed. So that is the first thing. And then the second thing, we really want to check that uh, the uh, final balance is in fact uh, what we want it to be. So we assert that the expected balance is equal to the actual bank account balance. There we go. So these are our tests. We've had to put them into a set multiple because we have two assertions. And so we're testing that the final balance is what it, it needs to be and also that the operation uh, succeeds or fails depending on uh, what we specify. Now the question is, well, who exactly provides these arguments? Because this is our test. 
Now, what nUnit gives you is it gives you an ability to define several test cases. So the way this is done is using test case. So you write test case, open the round bracket, and here you specify the arguments which get fed into this method, one, two, and three. So for example, if I have, and we know that we have a starting balance of 100. If I withdraw 50, then I expect the operation to succeed, so I put a true in here, and the final balance after withdrawing 50 should also be 50. So that is a single test case. Now let me make another test case. So let's suppose that I try to withdraw 100. This should also succeed, and I should get the result of true. And the final balance should be zero. However, if I try to withdraw more than I actually have, let's say I try to withdraw a thousand, the operation should fail, so we should put a false in here, and the balance should remain unchanged at a hundred dollars. So now I have a bunch of test cases. You'll actually notice that the icon here on the left is similar to the icon for the entire test fixture. And by the way, we need to uh, decorate this with the test fixture attribute. So the icon is now uh, multiple and if you actually click on it you'll see that in addition to having run all instead of just run you also have the different cases and you can run the individual cases or you can run every single case. So let's actually go ahead and do this. I'm going to alt enter here and I'm going to run every single test case from this test that we've written. All right, so as you can see, most of the tests actually fail. One of them doesn't fail, curiously enough, because we decided to return false by default, but the other tests fail, and so we need to do something about it. And for this, we need to actually provide an implementation of withdraw. So this is rather easy. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check whether the balance is greater than or equal to the amount you're trying to withdraw. And if it is, then everything is okay. You can decrease the balance by the amount and return true. Otherwise, you return false because the operation has failed. So having made this, what we're going to do is we're going to build everything and then going back to our test session, I'm just going to select every single case. And you'll notice that we have a hierarchical view of uh, first of all, the entire assembly and then the namespace and then the test fixture and then the test. And underneath the test, we also have every single case. So I'm just going to uh, run all of them run the entire session in fact and this time round everything succeeds. So the takeaway from this is that if you have several different scenarios but a single block of code which fits all of them, so this test fits all of these three different scenarios, you don't have to replicate the actual test. You can write the test once and then make a bunch of test cases here which actually specify both the inputs to the test as well as the expected outputs. And in this case, we have two outputs, so we're using a set multiple, and then you perform your test as normal. And the test runner framework, whether it's ReShop or Visual Studio or something else, is actually going to recognize the fact that you have a bunch of cases. And as a result, in addition to being able to run all the cases, you treat each case individually as well. So for each of the individual cases here, you can run the case, you can debug it, and if you have a dot cover in dot trace, you can also cover and profile them as well.